Last time we looked at consumption, carbon footprint and food miles and how what we eat and when we choose to eat it affects the world around us. Now we've got out of the classroom and we're going to look at how we can reduce our impact on the world by sourcing food closer to home. Like most of the country's top chefs, Michael Keynes is passionate about local food. He's come up with a challenge for Jordan, Jamie and Naomi to find out about local food production near their school and to bring back ingredients for him to cook with. And while they're off finding out a little bit more about local food production, I'm going to find some of the wonderful biodiversity you can see on Devon's farmland. I've come here today to Quick's dairy farm in Newton St Sires to talk to Mary Quick about her dairy farm that's been in her family for hundreds of years. Hi Mary. Hi Naomi. And how we get from this to this. So this is where it all starts? Yeah. Well of course a cow has to produce a calf in order to produce milk and also these or their sisters will be the milking cows when they come to produce a calf themselves. So how long is it before they actually start producing milk themselves? So, well, that's about two years old. Oh. So it'll be in two years' time, these will be in the milking parlour. Do you want to come and see the cows? Yeah. OK, let's go. Enough. Here we are at the milking cows. We've got 525 cows in this field. We milk them twice a day, and they're producing about 20, 25 litres a day on average and that we graze them outside all the time because that's healthier for the cows and better for the environment and and also is cheaper to produce and nicer for the people. So you don't sell the milk? No, we make it all into cheese and then we send the cheese, you know, to the sell it in the farm shop and the rest of Britain and around the world. I think I got close enough to those cows. Oh, don't worry, they're really safe. I'm sure they are, but I'm much happier on this side of the head. As well as acting as a barrier between one field and the next, these hedgerows act like a wonderful shelter for the livestock when it's storming. But the hedgerows also can be thought of as long, thin woodlands which inject wildlife into the heart of the farm. This stretch, for example, we've got willow, blackthorn, hawthorn, bramble, and lower down we've got wildflowers like red campion and uh, this is hedge woundwort. When farmers talk about sustainable environmental farming, it's these hedgerows that are injecting that lifeblood into it. So what's actually going on here, Mary? So what we've got is milk that we've taken from the cows in the milking parlour. Yeah. We've brought it over here. We've added starter, which acidifies the milk, which that's what drives the cheese-making process, making it more acid than milk. Okay. And then we've added rennet, which solidifies the milk. So although this looks like liquid milk, what you've actually got is the curd. So this is curd and whey, oh. it, like the nursery rhyme. Sorry. Here we've drained off all the whey, yeah. but we've got the curds, which is the solid part of the milk. Okay. And we're turning it over and over again. And this is to get the right texture and to have it at the right temperature. And then, in a minute, we'll be milling the cheese. We've milled the cheese and we've salted it, and all that is about taking more and more moisture out of the cheese. And then we're pressing it into the moulds, and this will drain the cheese and actually form the shape of the cheese. So we're in the cheese store now. We've brought the cheese out of the cheese dairy, out of the presses and into the cheese store where we age it, we, we mature it, you know, and they get the mould forming on the, on the rind, which helps to form the rind, dry the cheese out and bring up, develop all those lovely flavours of traditional cheddar. So um, how old is your oldest cheese? Well, the oldest cheese that we're maturing, we're taking some up to three years old. Do any of these get sent abroad? Yeah, in fact, those three-year-old cheese are maturing to send to Australia. We send it by ship rather than air freight, so it's not so carbon heavy. So can I buy these locally? Yeah, sure. Would you like to come and taste some at our shop? Sounds great. OK, come along. Now, I just have to ask you, do you like cheese? Yes, I do. OK. <laughs> First of all, we'll try some mild cheese. But now we're going to try some mature. Here's some smoked cheese. Tastes like um, smoked bacon crisps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
So what are you going to be cooking for Michael? Devon rabbit. Okay, so which have we got? Mild cheddar, mature cheddar or smoked? I think the mature. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you. I've come to Four Elms Fruit Farm here in Sidmouth to talk to Richard Smedley. Hi Richard. Hello Jamie. So I know it's quite obvious but what do you grow here? Well primarily we grow dessert apples, Cox's orange pippins, russets, brayburns and bramleys and we're also producers of apple juice. And I also noticed that there was a few beehives um, down there. Do you also produce honey? We don't produce honey ourselves, but a local beekeeper keeps his hives on the farm, which are absolutely essential for the pollination of the orchards during May. Insects are important to farmers and for more than just pollinating fruit trees. You can think of invertebrates as some sort of natural pest control system in the farm. This field will be full of small invertebrates living in amongst the grass, and that's why I brought this sweep net. I'm going to go out, have a little sweep around, and see what I can find. Whew. Well, there's plenty in here, so I'll shut that off and we'll have a little see what we found. Wow, there must be 60 or 70 different types of insect in here from that short sweep alone. Now, some things are quite common and probably familiar to you all. This is a, a meadow grasshopper that you can find on your school field. Here, something a bit more unusual, this is a flame-back capsid bug, which has got long stabbing mouth parts for piercing plants. And then this one, quite bizarrely, is a blue-tailed damselfly that we found just tucked in down amongst the grass sward, waiting to fly off and eat insects around the farm. Now, all these insects are found here in the field and they're a great indication that this is a really healthy field and uh, it supports a great amount of biodiversity. How do you exactly farm an apple? It's a, a, a job that takes 12 months. People think you just plant the tree and that's all you do to it. But in fact, you have to look after it. It's not a question of just picking the fruit and, and going away.